Now that we've looked at the entropy of phase changes, let's continue with entropy and look at the entropy change for reactions. An entropy change is defined as the change in the concentration of energy in the system. The entropy change is positive when the system energy gets spread over more states, which means it has more disorder. Gases are phases that spread energy over more states. So the entropy change is positive for reactions in which the number of moles of gas increases. The entropy change is negative when the system energy gets concentrated into fewer states. So when we look at a reaction in which the number of moles of gas decreases or is negative, the entropy change is also negative. And finally, the entropy change is close to zero when system energy stays at approximately the same concentration. So this would be for reactions in which moles of gas in equals moles of gas out. Let me give you some examples. Let's look at these reactions and predict the sign of delta S at standard state. For this first reaction, the calcium carbonate is in the solid phase. So we have no moles of gas on the reactant side. We have some carbon dioxide gas on the product side, so we have one mole of gas. Gas is increasing, so the entropy change is also positive. For this next reaction, we have three moles of hydrogen gas and one mole of nitrogen gas on the reactant side. And we go to two moles of ammonia gas on the product side. Gas is decreasing, therefore the entropy change is negative. We are concentrating the energy among fewer states. In this last reaction, we are going from two solids to two solids. So that would be no moles of gas to no moles of gas. There will be some finite value for the entropy change, but we know it's not very large. It's very close to zero. Here are your student questions. What is the value of delta S for the reaction below? I trust you can see the reaction is going from 5 moles of gas to 2 moles of gas. How about this reaction? Students often miss this question. I remind you to only focus on the moles of gas. In other words, the moles of oxygen and moles of carbon dioxide. Here is your last question. Going from no moles of gas to one mole of gas. The last part of this lecture reminds us that entropy change is temperature dependent. I like to explain it like this. If your room is a neat place and you come back from lecture and throw your backpack on the floor and throw your keys on the bed and throw your jacket over your chair, it's very noticeable that you placed a few objects out of place. After all, the coat should go in the closet, the keys should be hung up by the door, and the backpack doesn't need to be in the middle of the room. So a little entropy in an ordered system causes a big change. On the other hand, if your room is a sty, if your laundry is all over the floor, if your bed is not made, and your desk has papers all over it, well... Throwing your backpack on the floor doesn't really add to the chaos on the floor, nor does throwing the keys on the unmade bed add to the chaos or your coat on the chair. 
A little entropy in a random system does not change the overall randomness of the system very much. How do we represent that mathematically? Remember that entropy change is temperature dependent. It is heat in joules over temperature in Kelvin. So let's look at 800 joules of heat added to a system at two different temperatures, when water freezes and when water boils. 800 joules added to a system where water is frozen at 0 degrees Celsius adds an additional 2.9 joules per Kelvin to the system. On the other hand, if we add 800 joules to 373 Kelvin, where water is boiling, we now have only added 2.1 joules per Kelvin of entropy. I realize these numbers look close, but the top one is almost a 40% increase over the bottom value. Now that you understand there are two variables, delta H and delta S, it's time to see how they interact together.